Hey y'all, it's me, Nisi Lynn. I hope y'all are having a good day. It's a little afternoon here and I'm gonna jump on. Last week I tried to rush, rush through. I knew the girls were about to get up from their nap time, so I was trying to rush. So I'm going to try to pick up the questions and comments I was going to um, tell in the last video, some shops that are shipping and places to get finishing fabric from that y'all recommended um, so kindly and help each other out and some questions. And then I've got something I'm gonna work on. I'm gonna show y'all my birthday start. I didn't start because I wanted to uh, share it with y'all because a lot of y'all had questions about figuring out where to start and making sure you had enough fabric. So we'll just kind of go over that um, toward the end of the video. This won't be my normal, so I won't go over all my whips and things. I'm gonna show um, a little bit of whip, but not all that I'm working on. But the first thing is Susan um, had tech, had messaged and wanted to know what sulky I use that's, and I don't know if it's even gonna focus, probably not. Let's see, if I go this way, why not? It's 4106, and that's what I used, that's the rainbow letters in the bunny right there. So those are the rainbow letters in him and I think I have my camera upside down today, so odd. Hmm. But she had asked for that. I have not made, I've not figured out good ways to make links yet. So when I pulled the thread, these were the two colors that I was going to use. It called for like two colors of gray. So the gray I did end up using was this Gast Tin Bucket. It's so, so, it's a beautiful color. It had some just real mild variation in it, but enough to show. I loved it, it was kind of a gray blue, but I just, the two colors of gray was not enough for me. So the girls wanted those rainbow letters and it ended up just being genius. And um, Patty, <laughs> y'all, I did not know that these things open up like this. You can pop these things open. I always just take the thread and just wrap it around and it'll hold on to it, which I think is genius but I didn't realize, like Patty said, that you can pop it up actually. So thank you, Patty. And Patty says that they have a direct website, Sulky does, that you can go to. And then once you order from them, they'll send you sales and things. So that's something to think about too. Now in these times of not having enough um, stuff to get. So um, Carla had mentioned how lucky I was to have the girls every day. I am so lucky to have them every day. I would be losing it if I wasn't getting to have them every day and was sitting here by myself. I will say my poor sister, um, I think I've told you before, she's a yoga teacher. And so she's teaching from home now. Of course, they've closed the studio. They're doing their classes online. Um, she's cut her rates, which was great. She's still paying her teachers, but she um, cut her rates in half because people weren't getting to come to the studio. And so she's offering all these classes online and things. So she's home and I'm lucky that she's home. My mom, you know, lives in the little, it lives in the little house right by her. So they're, you know, she can keep an eye on her and they can visit. But my sister's oldest daughter, Shadow, that is um, just 50 days older than Micah, has had cancer twice and has a new baby. And so of course she is on absolute major, complete lockdown. I mean, they're not going anywhere. They're not, you know, seeing anybody. They did come by my house, my mom, they came by my sister's house the other day and stayed outside and stayed apart from each other. And that was the first time that she'd even been able to see the boys because Dax is um, in the first grade this year, the older brother, and then um, Dusk is just a baby. And so my sister has not got to see them and I know so many of y'all are in that same boat. And um, I'm so thankful that the girls come every day. I enjoy them so much and I would be heartbroken. So I know a lot of y'all are in that boat and I am sorry. This is just being hard, hard, hard. Um, Mella had commented that she, you know, was making a want list. And let me think who told me she was making a want list initially. Cindy had said she was making a want list. And Mella, and Mella said she was making hers too. And I'm gonna tell y'all, when I get to Hobby Lobby and Michaels and Joann's, my want list is gonna unroll like a king's decree. I'm gonna have to 
pop that thing and it's just gonna mur, 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 down to the ground because it's gonna be about 800 miles long. All the things I want to look at and touch and buy and all that. So that's how my want list is gonna go mellow. I found tons of birthday twins too. That was super fun. Um, Linda, Linda Meeks was, has a birthday twin. She's my birthday twin. She is, was 73. I thought that was so exciting. Um, Angela Springett, I hope I said your name right. Cheryl's grandson, Maverick, um, she's missing his birthday. And um, Laura's mom, there were so many. So I've never had a birthday twin like in real life, so I was super excited about that. I know y'all think that's probably silly, but you know, most people growing up had somebody that they had a birthday with at school, but I don't think I ever had anybody with. Um, using variegated thread. Oh, Bailey, I'll try to remember to bring that. I have a BBD piece that shows when you use variegated thread, if you don't make each X. I have a piece that I did and I used the sewing method and it does look striped because it's a narrow piece. And then I use the sewing method going back and forth and it does look striped. So Bailey, I'm gonna put a big old star out here because once again, I forgot to grab that to show you. Um, Edith said she's having problems with knotting up on the back of her fabric. Check the length of your fabric. I usually cut my thread from like my wrist to, to kind of like here. And that's how long I use my thread. That's um, just, that's how I like it. If you if you're having problems, try shorter. Make sure you're using good thread. If you're using, I'm sorry, but if you're using off-brand thread or some store-brand thread, sorry if you're a store-brand company, but y'all's thread knots up. So, it will knot up on you. If your needle is too small, your needle is, um, some people get real fancy about thinking, um, I don't know about, that it's like something to use a small needle. We ain't men, y'all. We don't have to get in contests like that. Use the needle you like, but it, it, it you're not fancy if you use it just because you use a little needle. Your needle is to make a hole in your fabric for your thread. If your needle's too small, your hole in the fabric won't be big enough and it's gonna catch going through. And if you have a shoddy piece of Ada, they come in kits a lot of times some kits have great fabric, some kits do not. If you have shoddy fabric, it'll be, I don't know, we call it boogered up. Like if you hit, you're trying to nail, a, nail into a board and you hit the board all around it, it kind of tears the board up. We say it's boogered up. And cheap fabric around that hole is all boogered up. There's little tiny fibers and it'll catch on your thread. That'll snag you up and make you have mistakes and mess on the back. Now, the back really doesn't matter. I, my backs are pretty neat always. That's just me, but I hear again. We ain't men, we don't have to get into those kind of contests. No. So if the back of yours is messy, unless you're planning on putting it in one of those frames that's glass on the front and glass on the back, I'm not thinking it matters a whole lot. So, but if it bothers you, fix it. If it don't bother you, don't worry anything about it. But it is, she said it's wasting a lot of thread and it does waste a lot of thread. So check your fabric, check your floss, and check your length of your thread and check your needle. You may need to toss your needle and get a new needle. Sometimes the eye of your needle will get a little boogered up place in it for lack of a better term, and it'll catch your thread and make a mess. So usually then your thread will be kind of shreddy, but I would check all those things first if you're having problems with that. Um, here again, if you're using like 14 or 28 count fabric, try 24 needle. 16 or 32 count, try 26 needle. 18 or 36 count, try 28 needle. And you can go, you know, up or down from there, whatever suits you. Some people like the petites, some people don't like the petites. It's just preference and remember that your needle is making a way for your thread to go through your fabric. So you need to keep that in mind. And just like I said, I like mine that long. Some people, and this is if, I, if I'm doubling it, okay? This is also if I'm using um, the sewing method, and this is not variegated. If I'm using a variegated piece, I don't go much longer than this. So that's just me. But um, find what you like and 
and just work with it. Uh, several of y'all said y'all wanted to be my van. I'm thinking y'all probably quit, but Julie, Janelle, and Tanya are, um, have put in their, their application. So every year for Christmas, I've asked for an assistant. I haven't got one yet, but I keep on asking. Maybe someday, someday it may happen. If I ever have one, they're gonna drive me around because I don't like to drive. You'll have to be able, well, maybe not fix my hair now that I'm keeping it short again, so that might get you off the hook about that. I have got to where I can get shed of bugs, which I don't like, but June bugs creep me out. But um, the girls, if Aria sees one on the back porch, she goes to screaming. So I've taught her to get her little shovel and flick it out into the yard. And when I said something about it, when my husband got home the night, James Williams said, what are you getting on her about? You remember the person who got naked in their front yard because a bug went down the back of their outfit? I said, hey, that was completely different. We lived in, when we lived in May Pearl, we had old hackberry trees all around the house. And they're, I don't know if y'all know, they're trash trees. And they'll get hollow on the inside. So water bugs and all kind of yucky things get on the inside of those trees. So gross. And I was outside working in my flower bed. And this must have been in the... 90s, I guess, late 90s, because I had on a denim sh jumpsuit that was like shorts, and I was out there just working, and a water bug had crawled up on the branch of one of those trees and fell right down the back of that jumpsuit. If you think I did not unbutton that thing and run in the house and leave it laying in the yard, you are wrong. You are wrong. Yuck. Yuck. Now, I guess I should preface this with saying, I'm one of those people that don't wear pants. So, I had a bra on, but that was it when I hit my front door. My James Lee was like, what in the world? Y'all, it had to go. No. Yes, I ran in my house with nothing on but a bra and left my clothes laying in the front yard. But it fell right straight down my back and that bug was running up my back. No, no. No, no, no. That is disgusting. I cannot, I cannot. I, I can move them if I can see them, but when they get on me, unbeknownst to myself, that ain't gonna cut it. That is not gonna cut it at all. And I have moved some things around back here and got rid of some of my, at least the eggs. Um, I thought I would leave it up because I really thought they might, we might, I was dreaming, thinking we might get to have a big Easter egg hunt at the end of April, but don't look like that's gonna I've just pulled them over there. I'm just going to put them all in the boxes. So I'll leave up some springy things. To me, I can have chicks and rabbits, you know, bunnies, things like that. But um, eggs really says Easter. So those are over there on the table to get uh, the first shift of things, get and put away with the summer put away stuff. A lot of y'all had messaged that um, places it was shipping. So I'm going to read those off real quick. Um, Cross stitch places, and I, if I forgot any that y'all sent me, I am sorry. Uh, needle case goodies, acorns and threads, down sunshine lane, fat quarter shop, just stitching, ink, uh, Shelly Hay, um, so much love in Granberry, which is not far from me. I didn't even know it was there, so thank you. Uh, the stitch niche, if she has it in stock, I was confused about that. If she has it in stock, she can send it but she's not ordering right now. So if she has it in the shop, she can send it to you. Uh, Cross My Heart and Keepsakes. All those places are ones that um, some of y'all sent in that said you knew were shipping. So if you're low on things, um, of course you could always go to, you know, there's one, two, three stitch and those other places, but really if you can try to support, you know, the brick and mortars right now because they are, um, they're really hurting since they can't even have their doors open. So. If you can, I know those places are, and I will try to do that at least once a week. So um, shops, if y'all are listening out there, or if some of y'all's favorite shops, keep sending them, and I'll try to at least once a week read places that are still sending stuff. So um, now here in Texas, we're gonna go to opening. Uh, at the end of the week, you can do drive up service. So like the Stitch Niche, I can call, and um, Kim and them can get my stuff ready, and pay for it over the phone and everything, and they can come put it in my trunk. So we're trying to get things going, but we are um, we are not having as big a problem. Some of our areas, Dallas is pretty hard hit, but um, the other areas aren't aren't suffering as much. So they're trying to uh, get some of the businesses going again. So 
I appreciate that. Thank you, Governor Abbott. Finishing places, because we were talking about not having finishing fabrics and several of y'all offered to send stuff and y'all are so sweet. Um, because y'all said y'all had a good stash because I had a stash of patterns, but I didn't have stash finish and stuff Error on my part So um, I'm thinking they should do a hoarder episode on us cross stitching with all our cross stitch supplies And it won't be a shameful episode like those, you know, hoarding one shame shame on you You can't get through their house. It'll be like a glorious episode Cross stitch hoard. We could just all sit there and salivate over what the other one had and then you know Try to buy more which is where I'm at with that. Um, what is that one that I want? The Bittersweet Season? Yes, by Heartstrings. That's the one that Lisa the Kindred Stitcher had. She answered me back and several of y'all answered. And so I'm looking for that thing. It's not on eBay or Etsy, but just think if there was a hoarder's episode, we could find out. Of course, then we might rob each other's houses. Who had Witch's Hollow by Primitive Needle? Who had the Voodoo Dolls, the Voodoo Girl and Voodoo Boy by Haberdashery? Now, I hate a thief, but I might break into your house and borrow it and put it back. Is it still if I give it right back when I'm done? I don't know. Let's think about that one until the next episode. Finishing fabrics, though. Tula Pink is, you can get fabric from them. Back Quarter Shop, of course. Uh, she's out of the bundle I want right now, but they say it's coming again. Shabby Fabrics, Village Mercandil, Mastori, oops, whoop. Missouri Star Quilts and Keepsake Quilting. And then y'all said the um, Stitchery Express, and I can't read my writing because it's X Stitcher Express or Stitcher Express, but it has a little search thing and you can put in there like if you're looking for gingham and it'll tell you, or if you're looking for calico and it'll tell you. So I thought that was the coolest thing ever. I have yet to play with it and see, but um, I thought that was super neat. PDF files, um, my sweet um, Ann sent that she has ordered from my bobbin, and I'd never heard about them. They have a lot of patterns, they have PDF. Um, a lot of them are Russian designers and things, but they're really, really pretty patterns on there. So pretty. There were some beautiful, beautiful things on there. Some of it not my style, some of it completely my style. So um, don't think that it's all 100% backstitch or something like this, it's not. They had all kind of styles on there. So um, they were really, I was shocked at how affordable they were and how many, I mean, so many on there, so many. So my bobbin had, um, mybobbin.com had tons of stuff on there and I was so surprised. But now y'all, I'm so excited because this is all I'm gonna show y'all of my whips and I'm showing it because I'm so excited I can't not show it. I'm in love with these. I told y'all I was going, you know, I'd started a little bit on the patriotic stockings. So that I was gonna do, this is Patriotic July by Blackbird Designs, and then I was gonna do this one and start it. And then I thought I would do, where is the little house one? This one next. And I was gonna do it my silky thread, um, which I don't think I got in here with, but it's just red and blue. And I had a piece of 30 count, which is what it calls for. Y'all. Let me see, it'll go this way, yeah. I'm so dang in love with this. So in love. I love it. That is one thread of the silky blue and one thread of the silky red on the third count. So I finished that one. And I was gonna do the little house next, but then I saw that I loved, loved, loved the, which I don't know where the book for that one is, but there is an ABCD one, and it's in one of the other months, but I didn't get in here with it. Oh my gosh. On those, I just underlined my initials because I didn't want to change. I wanted just those two colors. So my initials, I just underlined in those. And then this guy here is, I think he's called Quaker Fragments in the March one. So you can get a better little look at him right there. And I've just got a little start on him here. But y'all, I am so dang in love with these. Oh my gosh. So I just pulled some, cause I knew I would never, I would never use that colorway. That's just not me. Um, it's way too subtle and um, just not me. So 
I thought, I'm just gonna get it in red and blue because it's just two colors, so it's perfect. And I am loving these, so I'm hoping um, to have these FFO'd by the time I do the regular, my regular thing on Friday. But that has been stitching up fast. It's been stitching up so easy. I thought that I had the other one in here, but I guess I've already pulled it off somewhere. I thought I had the one with the alphabets. And I loved it so much that I did not start my, I was gonna start their song by Batbird Designs on my birthday. First off y'all, I didn't even know that it was hard to find. I've had it a long time and I haven't done it and it's beautiful because I don't like using a hoop and I'm just lazy and undisciplined. So it says, I value my garden more for being full of blackbirds than of cherries and very frankly, give them fruit for their songs. And I love that. I'm a huge bird watcher. The girls, well, if y'all follow me on Instagram, y'all saw Kim James with my noculars, as she calls them, watching the birds out the window the other day. They love to use the noculars and look at the birds as they call them. So I didn't have the call for colors, but I went through my stash and just did a floss toss and did the best I could. So it doesn't have very many colors on here, but this is what I came up with. And I think that it will be just fine. And I bought this off a of stash and load. Um, thank you, Kim, years and years ago. And so there's a dark and a, and a gray for the outline of their wings and a red and an orangey red. What it calls for is, that I didn't have, is all week style works. Havana, Pelican Gray, Moss, Olive, Red Rocks, Charcoal, and Aztec Red. I think the only one I had was Moss. But I used um, mainly the week style works for the others. I've got a classic color work and a gas. But I am super excited about starting it. And I love these colors. And I am in love, love, love with this design. It is just so pretty. And um, I did not realize it was hard to find. Um, someone messaged me that it was, and I am, um, and it's going to them when I'm done. So before anybody else asks, I did not know. Um, I should stay better abreast of things, I guess. But I'm going to use it. I didn't start it because I was loving to do my Blackbird Designs stockings, and I have had a lot of problems with people talking, a lot of questions about people having problems about where to start on their projects. So we're just gonna kind of do a little cheat sheet here. This in here says, and I'm gonna have to try to cover this up with this. But if you can look, it'll say your design size. So I'm doing the 28 count is what I had in here. And it, so it says it's nine by 10 and three quarters, okay? So that is not your fabric size, that's your stitch size, because it says sampler size. So that's your design and you can you can go back and do the math on it you know 126 by 150 but i haven't checked it yet but they're usually right i'm touching my face but for the sake of just talking about it we're going to do this if you're having problems and you're nervous about starting and do your math double check the size that it is going to be nine by ten and three quarters and so since i'm doing 28 count over two i would just take that 126 and divide it by 14 and the 150 high and divide it by 14. That's going to tell me how many inches I've got. Okay. So here's my nine by 10 and three quarters on here. I even rolled it on here for myself and I had to just, I just take two pieces together. You can use a flyer out of the newspaper. Don't use newspaper cause it's got that black on it. So you can't just use your regular paper, but you know, you can see, and I'm on the wrong end here. Huh. I'm not. So we're at 10 and three quarters. And we're at nine. It doesn't have to be exact, but here we are, okay? This is gonna give us an idea. This is what our stitch design is, okay? I've taken my fabric and I've got it just stuck on this board here. All right, so here's our, here's our fabric. So if you can, you can see, if you will do this, that'll give you an idea of how big you're going to be. And then you can just measure in and be sure you're pretty even on all sides. And that's where you need to start. I'll cut myself a little pin 
kind of up here, if I can get my finger on it right here. And I just measured in and found where I'm the same because this one is not exactly right on all sides. Um, I think it's a 13 by 17 piece because that's another problem people are having is most things come like a nine by 13, 13 by 17. Some sh shops will specifically cut you the exact size you want, which is great. Some won't. So this piece I think is a 13 by 17 and I'll tell you a story about why it's got spots on it in a minute. But you can just measure in and make sure you have equal distance on the side and equal distance on the bottom and figure out your starting point. That way you know you have enough room. If you're nervous about it, that is the easiest way to make sure that you have enough space on your fabric to get started. So just make your little piece of paper, do your math, or like I said, it usually says on design size on most things, but do your math a little bit just to double check. I grabbed this, um, this just came in the mail, just cross stitch, and I think most of them say, let's see here. Yeah, I'll try to cover them up so you can't see, but see here, it says, oh my gosh, I'm upside down. It tells you, it does not want to focus. It's still not focusing, sorry y'all. But it'll say on here, design size is, you know, four and three eighths by four and a half or something like this. So it'll tell you on most of them, cut you a little piece of paper that size. And that is, if you're using the count of fabric they're saying, now remember that. So if it says that you did it on 32 count and you're using, you know, something like, if you're using 14, there is gonna be a little, there's gonna be a size difference, okay? So take that into account. But that will give you an idea of where to start. Do your math, make sure that you've got your stitch count and your size right. Cut out your piece of paper. I used to do it all the time, I've quit doing it. Um, of course, if any of y'all watched, which floss tube did I finish be thankful in? And you can see that I um, wasn't paying attention and I grabbed the wrong piece of fabric. I cut a piece of fabric in two pieces and I started stitching on the littler piece, not the bigger piece. And I didn't have enough room, so I had to kind of alter design to get it to fit. Maybe in, maybe in two, maybe floss tube two. It may be floss tube two that it's in there, but I cut a piece, I had a piece of fabric, I cut it in half, not in half, I cut it in two pieces. I needed to use the larger piece, but I was talking to the girls and not paying attention to something, and I grabbed the smaller piece and started stitching on it. If I had done this, I would have known that I grabbed the smaller piece, but I didn't. And I grabbed that smaller piece and started stitching away, and then I had to uh, change up the design to get it to fit in the piece of fabric that I had. It worked, and I did it, and I loved it. It's a beautiful design, but I would have much preferred not having to alter it because that does take time and it just, the original design usually is so pretty, you hate to change it, but sometimes you have to. So I will get a start on um, their song. I did not start on it so that um, I could show that easier without the letters and everything being on there. But if you cut your piece of paper, the size of the design and set it on your fabric, then you know it fits in there and you know how much you have all the way around. So. That's an easy way, especially if you're just getting started, to make sure that you have enough space to get everything done on there that you want done. Um, I am gonna jump back on here on Friday and do my regular floss tube. And uh, thank y'all so much, all y'all that ask about Mama. Uh, she is doing great with my sister there every day. Um, and she's getting her, you know, my sister of course is walking several times a day. And so she gets her out and takes her, makes her go walk with her a little bit. Um, she doesn't go as far as my sister, but you know, she gets her to go a couple of times. And so I think she's getting her in about a mile a day. And I think that oxygen to her brain is helping immensely. Kimmy James, baby, go in your room for just a second and let should get finished. I'll be in there in just a second. I would let her walk in here, but they sleep in their panties. So probably somebody will probably report me. Somebody let her come in here in her panties. So I'm gonna jump off here. 
go in there and cuddle with her and um, Aria Kyle and awake yet. So let me run in there and spend some time with her. I got to spend some time with y'all. I appreciate it. I hope y'all have a good afternoon and enjoy your stitching. Thanks.